Welcome to my vision. I have a vision of a world with maximum productivity, maximum efficiency, a world where we are developing the most elegant and sophisticated solutions to the world's most complex problems, a vision of a world where we are tapping into one of the most underutilized resources on the planet, a vision that is only a idea of possibility without action from everyone that's sitting in this room. But I'm getting a little intense. I like to be casual, if you couldn't tell. Um, I want to introduce myself. I think it's important for you to understand me and who I am so that you can better understand the root of this blossoming vision. I was born and raised in western Colorado and had a pretty normal childhood, depending on your definition of the word. But I was raised by my mom and her dad and my grandpa, and those two people would have the most influence on the woman that I would become. My grandpa is what you would have classified as a pack rat. He would hoard everything mechanical, motors, lights, electronics, just a whole lot of everything. And everywhere that we lived, he would designate a spot for himself where he would take those things apart and put them back together. And he would put them back together better than they were before, because <laughs> I got to throw away the extra pieces. Um, it was, I was really lucky to be included in those moments with him. He taught me to be inquisitive and curious on how things worked in those moments. He also taught me about failure, how it was okay. And our moments of failure are our biggest opportunities to learn. I was just truly blessed to have had him in my life. And to balance that ruggedness and that toughness that my grandpa instilled in me are the things that my mom taught me and honestly continues to teach me. Thanks, Mom. Um, she taught me to be elegant and just proud of my uniqueness. She taught me to always look for the beauty in the world and just to just be a strong woman. She taught me the other stuff, too, how to cook and get that stain out of my favorite shirt how to be caring and nurturing. Ooh, oh yeah. My brothers would question if I learned that last one, but I try. Um, the most important thing that I learned when I was younger, though, was something that they both taught me, and that's about hard work. Day by day, they showed me the importance of putting 100% into my work, even if it's work that I don't like. When it's all said and done, my work ethic is the foundation to my success and my ability to work hard, the core of my professional reputation. I look back and I reflect on those values and I carry them every single day. They made me unique, strong-headed, and gave me a drive to accomplish my goals. Uh, I'm kind of known for if I put my mind to something, I'm going to get it done. That can be a good thing and a bad thing, but it's proven to be a good thing at least 75% of the time. The other 25% of the time usually involve fire, and we can't get into that or my uneven eyebrows right now. Um, but I reflect on how those values were just really critical in my youth, and I think about middle school. I went to an amazing middle school and had the opportunity to be mentored by some equally strong-minded women. My eighth grade science teacher is one of those women. She was the lead advisor for a mathematics engineering science achievement program that at the time was offered around the country. It was through her strong-headedness that she got me involved in that program. I was hesitant at first, I didn't want to be labeled a nerd or anything but I got my mind set on being an engineer through participation in that program. I had the opportunity to do hands-on learning activities where I could fail and learn, and I just, I absolutely loved it. I stuck with that program throughout high school, and as soon as I graduated, I would go on to college to study mechanical engineering. I tell my students all the time that college is not a race, but a marathon. I think that takes the edge off, knowing that it took me six years to graduate. But I graduated nonetheless and I stand here a representative of an extreme minority within my field. Reflecting on middle school, I think about that dreaded first day of school uh, where you have to like stand up and introduce yourself to everyone and say something you did over the summer or something lame like that. And you would have to endure it with the same group of people you did it with last year, yet that never took the anxiety all the way away. I never really hated that moment. It was an opportunity for me to tell people what I wanted to do with my life. When I would tell people I wanted to be an engineer, I would get nothing but support. It's because they didn't know what I was talking about. <laughs> my friends thought I wanted to conduct trains for the rest of my life, <laughs> which wouldn't have been terrible. Actually, my grandpa and I bonded over trains, so I actually really love trains. Um, my family thought I wanted to work on cars forever. Again, that wouldn't have been terrible. My dad and I bonded over cars, so I actually really like cars. But my mom, my grandpa, and my adult mentors knew really what that meant, and they would go on to push me, support me, and rally behind me. They believed in me. It was something that you heard a lot of, that technical industries like engineering needed more women. It would seem those first couple years of college, though, that not a lot of women got that message and felt inclined to be the women that the industry needed. By the time junior year rolled around, I had watched countless women change majors or just blatantly quit. They called junior year the gauntlet year anyway, because that's the year where you either make it or you don't. 
I graduated with 32 people who managed to make it, seven of which were women, myself included. I will always remember how, oh, dang, thank you. And all I got out of it besides the degree was that really sweet jacket. <laughs> I, I trophy that jacket. But I will, remember, I will always remember how ecstatic my academic advisor and head of the mechanical engineering program was that year because of the female graduation rate. It was the highest that our program had seen. I knew different, though. I had, I had just seen it from a different perspective. I had watched countless intelligent, intelligent women just quit. The seven women that were left were going to go on to try and change the engineering world, and I'm determined to be one of those women. Getting to know the other female graduates to the extent that I did, I mean, we practically lived together for a while. Um, they all had a similar background that I did in terms of education. They had strong role models in their primary years, adults who invested and believed in their goals just as much as they did. Finding that common element in our educational journeys really inspired me to want to be one of those role models. So, following graduation, I would remain on the western slope of Colorado where I would get involved in the very same program that helped nurture me as a child. I am fully invested in supporting this program that encourages the inclusion of more minorities and more women in STEM. And I'm happy to report to you that that program reaches over 300 students every year, engaging them in science and preparing them to make STEM their career, should they so choose. Yeah. I know. <laughs> and there are tons of programs like that that are popping up around the world. We were seeing high schools and career centers offer technically specific programs aimed at getting STEM in the hands of our children. My alma mater, in fact, recently boasted their highest freshman female enrollment in their mechanical engineering program at over 46%. I didn't know how else to say this when I was preparing this speech. That's so badass. That's almost half women. And while that male to female ratio is optimistic on the collegiate level, there's still a chilling drop-off in the utilization of these women on the professional level. There are research studies out there that are collecting data, reporting specifically on the retention of women in STEM. And these reports are showing that up to 40% of women who are graduating with a STEM degree will never go on to use it after they graduate. They will never go on to be a professional in their field of study. I remember finding that research when I was starting a women in engineering club on the college campus that I was attending at the time. And I was just blown away at the idea that there's women pouring blood, sweat, and tears into a degree that they're just never going to use. I asked myself, what's going on here? What's, what's, what's going on? I just, I don't get it. Women are seeking higher education. Since the 1990s, in fact, women are outpacing men in earning higher educational degrees and technical certifications. In 2017 alone, 57% of all bachelor degrees went to a woman. That same demographic of educated women, 20% of them earned a degree in engineering of some kind. So at the time, I chalked up those lost women to not having strong role models in their primary years, and I forge on with my mission of delivering programs to our youth, developing their skills and engaging them in science. By now, you should be asking yourself, where's the vision? What's the issue? We're encouraging our young people and it's working. The issue is this. Those women that we're losing from industry, those strong women who went through the hurdles of educating themselves yet can't find a professional place, we're not losing them because they didn't have a strong role model. We're losing them because these technical industries have no place for us. Several months before I graduated college, I landed a technician job for this amazing company and it was just intended to support me and my family as my grandpa battled cancer and I finished school. I was fortunate enough for that job to blossom into a career building opportunity. I worked with the most amazing manager who I give the most respect to even to this day. He helped me develop those skills that you don't learn in a classroom. Needless to say though, that was an engineering technician career. Not the same thing. <sighs> I was doing engineering work. I was drawing, I was designing, I was learning procedures to ensure quality and customer support. I was learning to balance external and internal customers and all the projects that came to my desk. The stresses of the job were overwhelming at first and quite honestly, my performance underwhelming, but I eventually got to a place where I felt like I did my job well. My managers would go out of their way to tell me what an outstanding performer I was and that everyone, if not 
all people at my workplace could rely on me to always go above and beyond in my work. So, it was during a performance review that I blatantly asked my manager what I needed to do to be an engineer at that company. Aside from the pay, I just wanted that title. I wanted to be able to tell people I was an engineer, not an engineering technician. I'll never forget the answer that I got that day. My manager told me that the engineering title was in my future at the company, but at that point in time, I just wasn't confident enough. I'm sorry, but what kind of answer was that? Like, I'm an engineer, I like numbers, I like measuring things, I like things that are quantifiable, setting a goal, achieving it, having data to support it. What kind of measurable metric was my confidence? I never became an engineer at that company, and I struggled after that meeting. I tried to be more confident and assert myself to have faith in what I brought to the table, and ultimately I think it was misperceived as me coming off entitled, and for lack of a better word, I came off like a bitch. That company is still an amazing company, and I thank them for the ways that they helped me grow, but it changed something in me. I went back and I revisited that data from before about female retention in engineering specifically. 20%, roughly 20% of educated women are earning a degree in engineering of some kind, yet only 11% of them are represented in industry. More shocking than that, aside from the women who aren't even going to use it, for every 12 women who do go, into, do go on to work in engineering as a professional, only three of them will still be there 10 years after they've entered the workforce. That's ridiculous, I'm sorry. What? I, I look at those statistics and I'm startled. I'm upset. I have endured these experiences, having worked in the engineering industry for over four, year, four years now. I've lived those experiences. I've endured it firsthand where credit for my work went to the man on the team. I've endured it firsthand where my confidence is mistaken as me being a bitch, yet a man who's confident is deserving of advancement. I've endured it, I've experienced it firsthand where a male coworker blatantly asked me if I was qualified to do my job. We are losing women just as quickly as they are earning the highly regarded educational qualifications it takes for them to even be in the room. And it infuriates me to know that we as women have fought for so much in the last century. We've fought for our political voice. We've even fought for our sexual freedom. We fought for our way out of the kitchen in the first place, yet on a professional level, we are still being pushed down and subdued to a place where the world is not utilizing the talents that we bring as women. Sorry, I'm just, it's emotional, man. It's emotional. Um, I, <laughs> thank you. I've endured these experiences, and they all have collectively formed my vision that I have for the future. My vision is this. I want us to conquer the last industrial frontier for true equality in the workplace. I just want to do a good job. It's something I'm super passionate about. I, I often talk to people about this, and I relate it to racism. I don't know how else to relate it, with no intention of downplaying the severity or violence that often comes with racism, but in terms of its origin. Like, babies are not born racist. Racism is a perfect cocktail of environment and family values, potentially cultural influence, whatever it is. It's an ideology that is learned. The same can be said about gender roles, and by extension, gender capabilities in the workplace. Young boys are not born thinking that girls are subservient beings, incapable of being strong, technical, or intelligent. That's just not the case. In my fight for this vision, I call to us to sever an entire root of our humanity that supports these traditional gender roles. And that's a lot to ask. I realize that. Something like that takes time. Something like that takes conscious and deliberate awareness on how we perceive women, how we treat women, how we raise future generations of young people. But the fight for this vision needs to start now. It starts with women like me. It starts with women who are in college, educating themselves to take on those male-dominated roles. It starts now. It starts now. I have dedicated my life to supporting these programs that are designed 
to build up our young people, to build their confidence so that they can go on to college and take on these roles. Yet those programs are far and few between for professional women like me. We need more programs like that where we can develop those skills early on that help us be confident and assertive and exude those leadership skills that we need for management opportunity. We need programs like that where we find role models amongst each other if we're going to lay a foundation of change for the women that are to come after us. My name is Victoria. I'm an engineer. I'm a teacher. I'm a mentor. But most importantly, I'm a woman. I've endured these experiences, and much of the perspective I've given you today is from an engineering standpoint. But I am not alone in this struggle. There are women in, in these technical fields and highly likely beyond that are enduring the same trials that I am. I'm not up here asking you to put men lower than me. I'm not, up, I'm not up here asking you to pay me more without putting in the work. I'm just asking for a future where I express and determine my own limit, where I determine my own capabilities and it's not assumed because of what's between my legs. I call to action everyone in this room to join me in making this vision a reality. Give women a chance. Go into your workplace with an open mind. Do not look at them and determine their contribution. Do not determine their limits. Let them show you and let them decide. I hope you join me in making this vision a reality. Thank you. Thank you.